Let's start with the, the LAG match. So LAG... Actually, do we have the vetoes here? We'll start with the vetoes. All right, so we obviously veto Vista. That was our, you know, our veto going into pretty much all the matches. Um, they veto Subbase. Um, I honestly thought they were going to veto um, Six Star or something, but it ended up being just Rio anyway. We had the choice between Rio and, Sub or Rio and Six Star, so uh, this was just an on-the-fly moment of you know, what we thought we would you know, better, or better match up against, and we were just like, we want them to gun us on Rio if they're going to win, so uh, let's play Rio first map that's what we do they end up picking karachi map four which is a map that like we didn't like throughout most of the year but towards the end we were starting to get really good at it so that's why um we were comfortable with having the karachi map four if ended up going to it uh because obviously it was either karachi or they picked six star and they weren't going to pick six star into us so we knew that was basically going to be the hard points um for the s and d and the control so s and d's they pick high rise because we veto, we veto Rio. Um, we just knew that again, you know, they were a decent high rise team, and we we just weren't as comfortable on Rio. And we wanted to we we prepped hard going into the high rise to make sure that we were comfortable on it going into this match because we knew you know throughout the tournament it was either going to we were playing high rise or playing Rio for the most part map two since we were going to be picking team A. And then lastly, obviously, we we pick our invasion search because that was just our comfort pick the entire time. And then. Once again, high rise our our control auto veto. We were just comfortable with with invasion and control or invasion Karachi. So uh, they just pick whatever they want to play, and and we play Karachi versus them. How long how how long am I gonna be live? Uh, probably a couple hours. I'm 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 not gonna be streaming all day, but we'll be live for a couple hours. You know, detailing this match. Uh, like this is a, a you know a 56 minute vod, but it'll probably end up taking at least two hours to go through. All right, so we'll start with the Rio hardpoint. Rio hardpoint, we start at the quote-unquote bad side uh, towards P P2 side, like this over here, because it was our map pick. They get to pick their side. Most teams, or if not all teams, would pick, uh, you know, this P3 side. Uh, so let's, let's, just, let's just run it away. Actually, you know what? Is there a way to... Let me see if there's a way to make the mini map bigger for you guys so that like when I'm drawing on it, you don't have to just keep looking down towards the bottom left. Let me let me see if I can like add scenes and stuff and kind of help that out. Give me one second, chat. Like I'll, I'll add the display capture once again as a secondary source. And like here, let's see if we do that, but then make this bigger. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like that. I might have to do it a second time for the kill feed, because this will block the kill feed for sure. Let's do this. That's good, and then we'll do another one for the kill feed. Uh, shit, I'm going to have to... Okay. Oops. How's that chat? That decent? Let's see how that plays out. I, I kind of like that actually. All right, let's let's try that out. Let me see what it looks like. Let's see if I draw on it. Oh, this is good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We'll we'll keep it that way. Can you make the kill feed smaller? I right, bet we'll do. That should be that should be good. Okay, let's let's get into it. All right. So they start preferred side. They're going to hit the hill first, or touch the hill first. Ant goes on a quick flank. AG gets a kill with a nade on time. He's going for a quick flank because... Here, I'll detail it. 
because we backed this guy down, number eight. He uses his nade. He has uh, Ken also watching over him. So we're backing this guy down, number eight. So this allows for Ant to, to do a quick prince through, uh, through P3 off, off the break. This is like a perfect break on, on the bad side. Four down. You, you literally can't ask for a better break on the bad side. Now you know they're spawning back shops. You can sort of take some chows here uh, because you know like you you know when they're spawning and they're spawning all up and you know by the time that you die they would have spawned already and they're gonna spawn you know towards this bad side or sorry towards this you know shop side while we're still holding. We have our bridge covered. We have our you know stairs covered. We're in the hill. It's it's just like a, an absolute blender for them right now. And it's just going off at the beginning. See, AG, he takes a left out, picks up the left in case they were going to take some type of new route or flank route this way. So he's just, you know, accounting for that. We still have Ken on this right side. So he's making sure, you know, he has all of this street. So he basically says, you know, they can only come middle. They can only come eskies or stairs. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. Again, super easy setup because you're just getting all the kills. Success in those hold percentages as well. Now with they double team Ken on the left side because, again, they realize they can't go through middle because they're just getting shut down constantly. So they're figured, you know, let's take one side. This way we can just isolate one of the people. They isolate Kenny um, and, and they get a kill here. So that's that's the way that they're just going to try and open this up. But from there, again, you know, AG, who was holding this left side, ends up taking a route through boxes. We unfortunately die on time because, you know, Ant has to now pick up this right side. AG takes the flank, but he gets traded out. And Anthony just have a, has a 1v1, and he wins it. So, Even though we die on the right, we get end up getting the trade battle. And uh, you know, so we still hold this time. And now they're kind of screwed because they have to make sure that they rotate towards this P2 side. But we're already here, you know, focused and set up. Off hold. They just send three guys to... Flank through through caution and through the back. AG gets one, but gets traded out. But now he can get the information that two guys on their team are hitting through caution. So this is big because a lot of holds are just based on a like you know reading the pressure and really reading where they're coming from. Because he realizes he got one kill and now he has information on two other guys that are coming caution, we can adjust for that. Now for optic, but it's being threatened. And this is where that number And Brandon gets a kill for it. And is still on time. This guy caution doesn't chow him. Number one is still watching that. This guy number five is still here towards this ramp. He hasn't, you know, pushed up yet. And still staying alive somehow. They end up getting a few kills, but again, now we know where the next two guys are. One guy's on time. One guy was near the cop car. We can easily, you know, hold this. Actually, Fame gets a two piece, so that's unfortunate for us. But you know, the idea for from us was there. That's just a good two piece by Fame. Kenny catches, who is it? Fame throwing a nade. He gets a two piece on Estriel, who is by the ramp. And on the other side, AG is the one who takes the route towards this lobby side to pick up anyone who might be pinching either through caution or through uh, this deep P, uh, this deep lobby side. So this is a good pickup by AG. With this kill, he has free reign to do whatever. He can pinch up through middle if he wanted to as well. And I believe that's what he ends up doing, but we'll see. Yeah, that's what we do. Brandon gets the last kill on, on this older time. AG can now hold up some progression or get some kills, take some chows over here. That's fine. Now he, he relays to number one, Kenny, who's going to be taking this route towards the bridge. He realizes, you know, fame going to the, the right side. He's weak. So Ken can just be aware of this and can get the free kill. So again, even though AG dies there, he gets the information, gets this guy weak. So Ken has a free kill on this rotation over here. And now they have to pick up the left. Dashy, two piece off of old. This is so massive because we get two kills over here. We know we'd kill one guy on the right side. Last guy is probably somewhere middle. Um, it's Estrel. He ends up, you know, trying to flank Ken on this route over here. But from this, number two and number four can just fully push on through towards boxes or or, or towards around. They're going to be start starting to spawn, you know, in the back here. Perfect rotation. 
Unfortunately, Ken dies to this, you know, this flank over here, but he spawns up with us. This is an insane credit by Fame. I don't think I've ever seen someone play this spot this deep. This is this is crazy. I think we end up dying to him or maybe get the trade. Brandon even tries to clear it too. But we I think they just weren't expecting to play that deep. Now because they had to get so many kills towards the back over here and and really refill the shop side because we had three people over the side, that allows AG to get on through towards uh, what we would call useless over here, this back corner. We start breaking through the bridge side. AG can try and get an opening because, you know, he's lost to them. He, they don't know where he is, and he's gone through to towards their base. He gets a huge two-piece. Now we have full, full control over, like, trying to break this out. They're breaking, um, or sorry, sorry they're st spawning super deep. And we can get some uh, some kills over here. And now we get spawns as well. Really good break. It's a good 30. Now we get the scrap time. They're already rotated towards P4. Again, one of the bigger things for Rio was uh, a P3 to P4 chain. P3 was a pretty pretty big hold. But P4 was the the bigger hold that you wanted to be making sure that you were you were uh, ahead at new for and and really holding. So this is this is what they choose to do. Obviously, they're not gonna like put more pressure because they're they're down by a good 40 points. If they were to lose to this hill, it'd be really really damaging to their game. So off of old, because no one uh, hits old for them through boxes or through middle, uh, and can take a route through caution to try and pinch them while the rest of these guys play towards our side. So you see number seven's even looking for it. Fame's even looking for it, but he, he doesn't get, give himself the right timing. Now he's playing th underneath the hot ball, making sure that he covers any route like this. You know, he doesn't really have the gate route, but you know, that's what he's trying to do. He has to give up something at least. But unfortunately, he moves. Ant is, you know, again, Ant is trying to figure out where this guy holding the pinch is. Plus, also, we died over here, so he's taking his time a little bit more. Yeah, so Brandy gets picked while they were trying to work the back, the two guys working the back here, and AJ gets picked uh, trying to break through boxes. So Ant's just taking his time because he knows, you know, he can disrupt their setup, but he there's no point in him doing that right now because, you know, we just went, you know, two or three down, or three down, basically. It's it's a weird situation because you want him to open things up, but you also don't want to, you know, completely chalk the entire hill because, you know, if he gets a kill and gets traded out, now they're in no position, or we're in no position to break, really. He needs to wait for them to at least get one kill before... He starts like actually doing something. So they finally get the trade. Unfortunately, you know, fame is just in another insane credit. So Ant doesn't look for it. Unfortunately, he dies. Again, it's, it's just a pretty hard hill to break. You know, if Ant would have gotten a kill on, on that, you know, on that flank over here while, you know, fame was watching or something, we probably break the hill. Uh, but you, you never know. And, you know, again, he still has to work it alone over there. It's pretty hard. Now we're just getting farmed here. There's nothing really, again, nothing too much we could do. AG already on the new rotation because we know, you know, might as well just rotate towards new. He gets a kill. I think he ends up getting trade out, does he? He backs up with his life. This is, this is really good plays. Okay, so he does get help from Brandon. This is a really good teamwork play. AG gets a kill, backs up, just plays his life, makes sure that he has someone watching over him. Uh, to help him out in this situation. That's where Brandon comes in. Now we have new control. So we're still holding. They were trying to break through boxes. Ant's able to get a kill. He's still able to hold, you know, this Eskies push. Again, gets another kill. AG actually pushes forward uh, through, you know, 
their lobby and, and gets another kill. So this is just super, super insane pressure from us. Yeah, AG dies, but Ant gets the kill, and now he can back away with his life. They're still worried about Ant towards middle. Ant gets another kill. Brandon's still getting kills on time. Or sorry, yeah, Brandon and Ken are both on time. They're they're helping each other out towards the street. Ant can now activate on these people towards the street. The only thing that's bad about this is, you know, because he's activating here, it's spawning them, you know, out. But we should know this based on Ken's spawn. It's just hard. It's hard to read. You know, he's he's gonna wrap around like that. So maybe a little bit too rogue, but you know, we were just kind of having. It's just unfortunate that they spawned out behind us. So unfortunate end of the P5. Now they have initial P1 rotation. So this is a big break from us because uh, having that initial rotation of P1 can really be bad or put you in a bad spot. But huge kills off the road. I mean, huge kills towards caution here and the kill towards bridge. Now we have numbers to break onto new. This is, I mean, those two kills were kind of scams in my opinion. But they're, they're able to still hold it. Yeah, okay, so... They throw their nades you. Unfortunately, AG goes in right probably a little bit ahead of what Ant would like to because he's still 61. So he's still one shot. Um, I mean, you, I guess they could have played it better and, and waited a little bit and then slid on in. But they were just, they wanted to get on in to at least kill one guy. I think Ant and him just weren't on the same page at that moment because Ant was so weak. That's just, I mean, that's unfortunate timing because of how weak Ant was. And then it just breaks down. It's not, not great, but... Yeah, that's just going to happen. They have so much pressure that they're just you're they're pushing through bridge to, to flank like this. You'll see this every now and then, but this is this is insane pressure to, to be doing this. So that's what Eshwell does. We pick him off. They're going to double it with with Connor and he gets another kill for it. So, you know, obviously that's just because they had so much map pressure. They were allowed to do that. They're going to keep doing it. Flames once again. He's going to flank our lobby. Because they have so much control over the map towards the P1 area, and because they had people bridge, and they were constantly like filling bridge, they can constantly keep pinching like this. Really annoying to do in the P1. Especially when we're spawning this side. We're spawning the closer side towards, you know, the soda side. Uh, they just have free reigns to, to keep, you know, pinching. So this is good plays by LG. Now, really, really important once again, because they have P1 control, 12 seconds left, they're, they're just trying to push through caution here, trying to spawn us in the deeper spawn rather than, you know, this closer one, and try and get kills here and hold from the front. That's what they're trying to do right there. So this is big on Ken to just stay alive. He needs to stay alive in this situation. Trades go down. We're still towards new ahead. Ken needs to watch out for anyone that might be pushing through boxes or a garage, like, on the rotation. But he's just trying to stay alive on the front side. Ant's now watching Caution. We're holding the back as well. Now we have to keep our eyes Caution because Ant just died. Trades happen. Ken needs to give up the front. Now he's just going to play behind, like, the hot dog stand or the gates. Yeah, so it's the gate pillar that he ends up, ends up going to. They're going to now start streaking. But this is really important for us because... With the streak, first off, you know, AG pushes in because he needs to, he, or else he dies from the streak. He ends up dying, unfortunately, but the big thing is for, for Ken to stay alive if possible, and he's able to. And they actually just team kill with the, with the streak. So rather than getting Ken underneath here, because, you know, he can, he can escape it from being underneath the pillars, they team kill. So now we still have control over the hill, and they're still breaking from the front, rather than it being, you know, basically a, a four on, or sorry, three on one on hill, and, you know, just it's just Ant left alive. So that streak kind of, that streak really fucked them over, actually. This is a good, this is a good pinch by Estril. We're late to pick up on it. It probably should have been AG, but he's, 
he has that one timing of instead of looking to his left right, or like looking to his right right here and holding it he he wants to go and you know first look at it and then go to caution and hope that he didn't get this you know specific timing right here but unfortunately he did so you know ag ends up holding it but it's a, just a second too late which is unfortunate because this is a good play this is a good you know you're supposed to be holding this but he has already gone through unfortunately And bigger kill on the rotation against Fame. Now he has free reign to run up mid. They actually haven't covered mid. These guys are still, you know, trying to work towards these people that are off of old. And Ant's just holding progression towards this side, which is really big. Ken's going to try and break through the bridges, right? I don't know if he knows if number five's over here. Oh, Ant doesn't even get that kill. That's a, that's a big kill by Fame. Big kill by AG on old. Again, we're going to try and push through P4. Because we got those kills off of old. Diamond Con, huge two piece. We probably should have got that trade, but Connor gets this huge two piece to hold this right side. Now he can basically go towards boxes and help the help the hill. He knows we're probably not gonna push this back out. Now they get they keep getting these kills. This is this is a hard hill for, for us to break here now at this point. They just won the rotation battles. You know, Ant getting killed P3 or not winning that gunfight is was big for, for LAG. They're still spawning the back, so they have better, you know, trade battles for us. They're just able to get their bodies back towards the hill quicker. We hit through old, we spawn them out. Now we need to battle through this hill. We need to get these kills here. P4. That's good by AG and Ken, you know, working this, this P4. Ant gets the last kill on, on old here, new, or sorry, at, at old, like, towards the back P3. Two guys left alive. We like it would be important for us to get both of these kills. Ag gets one. He gets the help from Ant, who is now pushing from you know old time two boxes. Gets the trade. We know that they spawned out, and now he can hold P4 from the from the better side. Huge trade battles towards this P4. That was a that was a big rotation. AG is trying to hit the pinch. That, that means it's a good play hitting the pinch because, you know, that's a, that's just a free route for him from where he was. And uh, we can just try and keep holding from this this other time. Unfortunately here, Connor does get a two-piece. Kenny is focused on flames over here. That allows Diamond Con to jump over Ant. Which is really unfortunate because Ant is prone watching the ramp push. This guy jumps over Ant, kills Kenny, and then turns and kills Ant. That's a really good play by Connor. But again, we, we spawn pretty close. Look at this. Because fame, fame isn't blocking our spawn. We're just spawning close and able to get right back into the hill. Like, Fame pro probably should have activated, qu activated quicker. He's thinking that he's spawning us useless, but he's not. I'm pretty sure. And then we just kill him and, and we kill their, the rest of their break. Or, sorry, the rest of their hold. That was... This is a, this is a big misplay from them. Because they, they could have had us in a really bad trap. And then, like, obviously spawning us over in this corner. So, huge kills. We have free reign to push up on the map if we want to. That's what we do. Ant goes towards P2. Unfortunately, he dies over there. But, again, it was a free play. And now we have middle control. So, now he can take a different route of spawn. AG gets the trade kill on this guy who was watching the pinch. We get more trades towards middle. You know, again, just teamwork trade battles. We're we're constantly keeping the progression that we needed. Ken's gonna pinch off old. I like this play because he knows that you know they would have to keep being aware of a possible pinch. 
Now he gets the kill on this guy. Number seven is now tweaking because he knows that Ken's pinching now, but he also has to care for their mid. He gets the kill on Kenny, but because he gets the kill on Ken, that means this guy is still over here, so he is not at the hill to help out his team. So that gives us free pressure, you know, to get on the hill and and get, and win the gunfights there. And even gets another kill, challenging a spawner. Because he gets the kill, challenging a spawner. Now they're spawning deep too. Big rotation out of out of us on the P5. So now we're we're stacking the hillside. We have number one Ken. He's gonna watch our, our P3 pinch. Huge kill. Now we know they're all coming from the front or from mid. We keep getting the kills front, so now we can we know there's a possibly like a guy mid here. Ken gets to kill you. Again, we re restabilize. Now we know they're all spawning towards this back left corner. We can get some really big pressure here. Like with Ken watching this cross, he can help the guys on time to either make them weak or just give them, you know, relay information that they're coming. That's it that way. He even gets a kill for it. Gets a kill and now he's even pushing up further. Trays by Hill. Ken is now helping his way towards the hill because he wants to be there as just, you know, a safety a safety net for Ant. So he made his way from, you know, spawn killing over here, realizing he is the one that needs to be going over to hill to help it out. That's it. that's what he does here. Gets a kill on Diamond Con. He knows the last guy alive towards like this this hill is just underneath him. So he's going to work with with uh, Brandon here. He sh he shoots in the back. We're clean. We get a kill new too. This is a this is a great end of the hill. Big plays by Ken on the P5. Brandon still holding the left side. We have someone on hill, and we have someone watching uh, Caution's pinch. So only thing that they could do is is come up through the middle here, and you know that's just going to be something that number three could react to anyways if they if they ended up doing that. And we get three kills for it. At this point, it's basically GG's, like, you kind of just need to make sure you're not trolling here. Just playing on the hill, it's just an easy, really, really an easy hold because you're just watching everything from the hill. Now you just chow, make sure they can't actually hit the point. Really big map one. Honestly, it really, that turning point was that P4. You know, they could actually really put us in a bad position there, but... Yeah, they didn't execute well enough, and we just we just punished their mistake. All right, let me let me catch up with the chat. What's good, T Prox? Do you count EWC as a major? Uh, yeah. I mean, I would put it maybe even a little bit more than a major. I don't know. I wouldn't put it at the same level as champs, but it's it was still pretty big. Is there a rule to how far you're allowed to push up and not flip spawns? Uh, basically, there's there's basically a line, like an imaginary line, if you think about it. Ken was making some big plays on that that P5 as well that last P5. Alright, let's let's move to the search. I rise search. Can we hear the search threats now the season over? I'll kind of break down the search stuff. Yeah. What's up, Rat Rataski? So like halfway, it, it depends on the hill. But yeah, halfway is like a good. I mean, it it, it really depends. So off the break, they're playing a little bit standard on defense without a trophy, playing a little bit more back. In this position, or this strat, Ant is, is trying to get to A uh, basically as quick as possible and try and catch anyone lacking that might be pushing through A towards this, you know, our, our right side. And we have AG and, um, and Ken who are going to go our, our side underground and watch the underground push. So a lot, of, a lot of teams would either, you know, if they wanted to be aggressive on the defensive side, they can double push up through what we would call closed, the like closed side underground, or they could double push open and, and go to blue or something like that. So we're making sure that by going underground here, we're covering this, this low blue push so that Ant doesn't get completely fucked over by anyone that might be, you know, trying to pinch this way if they, if they end up seeing him, if that makes sense. 
All this going on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. This will be uploaded to YouTube for sure. We also watch the close side. Okay, now we know no one's underground for their team. We're underground. And now we can try and make some forward pressure. Ant's going to still stay here, though. Uh, because it was really uh, a, a big thing for teams uh, when they're playing defense on the A side to late make plays through the left side here, like that. So he's just trying to hold progression and get a, a free kill. So as you see, Fame is pushed up, but he's pushed up to the heli stairs. So he does, we don't have the heli stairs for our team. Now he's making it to the hut. He doesn't see anyone on their underground stairs yet. So he's still playing pr this progression. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any help for us right now because, like, we haven't seen anyone yet. We see that there's a guy heli stairs based on how he shot. I don't know. I guess he heard he, or he, hears this guy. Yeah, he must have heard this guy uh, break the window, right? Yeah, he hears the guy break the window. Now he gets a free kill on flames. On the other side of the map, Brandon's our side B street. Unfortunately, he gets double child though. So he gets double child by these guys. Ant makes a play now on flames. So now it's a 3v3. There is one guy heli stairs that we have to take account for. Like we're already on bomb, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we, we've made it on our way onto bomb, but this guy heli stairs hasn't got a kill yet. But we also have to be worried about this guy on the other side of the propane here on this corner. So Ant makes this kill here on flames. We know there's a guy heli stairs. He's just trying to get in their base. Unfortunately, they, they pick him out, though. Number six was also playing in uh, towards their base. He thinks he has the opening uh, because he didn't see anyone towards this underground stairs here. But Estrell's right here right away to, to you know, cover this. We die on bomb. It was just this guy, Ellie stairs that kind of broke everything here. Now, you know, AG is in 1v3. So maybe, maybe if, if Ant got the kill and, you know, also saw Estrel towards the underground stairs, he could have made a play, but I don't think he realized that there was another guy technically still closer at base. So this is a, this is a smoke play that we had. Where we would throw her smoke middle. This kind of was a, I don't, I don't want to make an excuse, but it was kind of a reason why high rise played a little bit different for us at the EWC is because we we couldn't use uh, like smokes on high rise uh, just because of the GA. So what we would do is we we would primarily use their smoke towards uh towards middle here and and kind of screw with the team's heads on what we were gonna do. And, you know, once again, making some plays heli stairs. Or top heli, I should say. AG has gotten progression towards, you know, the elevators here because we realize no one is playing the B Street for them. So, Brandon kind of helps them just get into this pushed up position. And they're just camping on their, in their spawn, basically. They have two guys green tarp. It looks like they're going to try and make some type of play onto B bomb based on where they're working. Yeah, I think they smoke it themselves and they just go underneath towards their stairs and go underground. So this is just big on Brandon because he's the only one that can really watch underground for our team. And he kind of has to take timings left and right, basically watching the street and uh, also watching underground push through. Ant gets a free kill on the guy watching basically the pinch. I don't think he realized that Ant was already up top already. That's a big kill, big first blood. They're still middle map. Or sorry, they're still underground. They actually, they didn't go up the stairs here. They go underneath. AG sees them. He can flank them for free. He gets one. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't get a two-piece, but the other guy kills, a, uh, the other kill kills Brandon. So it's actually a 2v2. Ken and Ant are both low, low blue. They look towards our side underground. They don't see anything. They're expecting them to be on bomb already. Ken sees this guy's on bomb. He gets away with his life. 
All of a sudden, though, running out of time. He gets a free kill on Ken here because he, he actually pushed around towards the B Street, went around here and got an angle on him. And from the bomb, can't see this. As you can see, his ankle, he can't see that. So he's just he's just playing a credit on bomb. Now he, he needs to wait a little bit, get this kill, and then just try and get away. Unfortunately, though, Diamond Con is right there for the trade. If he was able to get underneath here, like through on, into close, there's, there was a chance that he could have wasted enough time. But, you know, Diamond Con was just quick to trade, so it was a big, good play by them. Watching Optic in their search and destroy, they don't really rely on the bomb plant to beat them. They are always trying to play for those kills. Gotta try to slow down this game. Standard spread here. We have two guys uh, working towards this green tarp area, kind of like what you saw LAG do in the previous round. Ant's gonna be in, inside blue. Uh, Brandon's gonna be watching the street a little bit passive. From them, they're starting to take a little bit more space towards the B side. They have one guy now, top propane. One guy watching the underground. They have people watching for a possible play by Ant onto this this right side because they saw him here low blue. Yeah, absolutely not. And now you've even got Fame taking an extra look through mid. Everything seems to be watched. Dynacon though does score for the position top side propane. Fred a couple of shots in. May free shots in to make a move towards. We realize they're not playing on bombs, so we can get bomb control. This is a big um, thing that we had never done in high rise before, where Ant jumps from the ladder to this top wall. Uh, it was kind of something that he was saving for champs because, you know, it's just a it's just a really good option play if you want to either you know if you don't want to necessarily go to bomb but you still want to help out the B Street, uh, but you can still jump down back towards the underground if you don't like what you see. So he's able to make this jump uh, and get a kill on Diamond Con here, which is really massive. He gets the first blood. Now he just he smokes, kind of makes it a little bit mixy. Once again, again, Ant was our smoke player. You know, he did get shut down by FaZe on this map, but, you know, he also didn't really have a smoke to work with. So I think that kind of hurt what he was able to do um, on this map, unfortunately. AG tries to make a play. This guy's at the, uh, what we would call the Abyssi spot. And, uh, but he's able to get super uh, quickly traded by Ant on this other side. 2v2 here. I wonder how Brandon died. Okay, he just got a bad timing where this guy had peaked out uh, top of pain, gets killed for it. 2v2 now. Um, this is unfortunate because AG was the one who had bomb here and he drops bomb there on the ground So that's not the best place for us to have to retrieve the bomb if we want to you know play later in this round Both the LEG guys work towards uh, low underground towards our side. I Believe Ant sees him AG actually dies here, but I believe Ant uh, can get this trade. Yeah, he gets a trade now. It's a 1v1 I really liked how he played this. He gets a bomb, plants it instantly. And what he does, he goes to this low corner here. Goes to the low corner, unfortunately, you know, he does get shot. This is big that he's able to stay alive. But I love the play to get back on bomb. Because you're expecting, like, in my opinion, if I'm, if I'm Flames, I'm expecting uh, Ant to dip out either th up the stairs, through middle, or through their base, and kind of wrap around that way. I'm not expecting this guy to, to just go straight to bomb um, to, towards the sack corner. So I really like this play by Ant. Flames doesn't really know where he went at all, and he doesn't check the one spot that he needs to check in, in low sat when he's up here uh, towards, towards these railings. Or towards these bridges, whatever you want to call it. So he, he jumps over Ant, and gets a free kill sack corner. Really good way to play that 1v1 in my opinion. Similar play, Ant once again going top heli. AG is able to get pushed up to this elevator corner. Once again, it's kind of the same thing that we did in the previous round. He gets one kill, gets straight out, but Ant is still forward pressure up towards the side of the map. Oh, Fame actually kills him here, but 2v3 now. Big pop by Brandon by going outside propane. We knew this guy was in the elevator because he's trapped here by Ken. He gets a kill, now it's a 2v2. Esch was in this corner. 
We can teamwork this guy. Actually, Brandon did get another kill. Oh, Brandon did get a kill on this guy, Green Tarp. That's huge. Now we know last guy alive is probably on bombsite. You know, he kills Brandon, but it's it's easy trade for Ken. Good trades that round. Offense this time. Brandon watching the cross. Ken and Ant are going to uh, move towards this right side of the map. And AG is going to go towards the low underground. Watch our underground push through. This just gets shut down because they, you know, they, they just realize we're, we're getting pushed up A side. And uh, it's pretty unfortunate because they don't really stack B or underground at all. You know, they have their furthest guy B side is this guy watching the underground stairs. So they have like basically three guys uh, watching this part. That kind of that kind of sucks for this strat. It's just a hard counter, really. AG starts making a play underground because he realizes none of them are underground. They know like at least two or three guys are on this right side. They start challenging us as we're moving towards this way. And actually gets two. Uh, but he gets it traded, and now it's just AG in a 1v2 with bomb down towards blue. It's not the not the easiest way to have a 1v2, and they're just they're just playing a crazy setup, waiting for them to, you know, make some sort of plant move. As soon as he plants towards A, they just teamwork it. Nothing really you can do. That's just a, a kind of hard counter first blood by them. Super aggressive break on us. So as you see, we have and going to the outer propane. I believe is Brandon on bomb here. Yeah, Brandon goes onto the bomb to Chow, and AG also goes onto the bomb. Unfortunately, because it, this was, I don't even think this was the strat that we had. This is more of an on the flight strat. Uh, and them just going B Street kind of completely fucks this up, especially for Brandon. This was, this was annoying to us because, like, they just completely counter us B Street, but it wasn't even the strat that, like, we had uh, gone over, really. So that was that was annoying for me and Damien because we were just like we've never done this trap before. And he's gonna go under, uh, underneath towards their side, like outer. Ag's already gone up to bomb. We're pushing towards the B Street with the with the ARs now too. Again, uh, again, unfortunate. I didn't care for the play because, like. We just we we don't have help with AG on the bomb. Now he just, he just gets first bloody because he I mean the guy's just on the bomb that goes behind the, behind him. We end up winning this round, but uh, it just wasn't a great strat because uh, Estriel gets like super super pushed up. You know, Dam Diamond Con is is in their base, kind of watching over him. But Brandon's able to get a free kill on, on number six here and get away with his life, which is big. Now we just need to wait for Ant to make a play in their base. But they should know. Honestly, they should know. It's so quiet that, you know, Ant hasn't made a play yet. You don't haven't seen him. That you got to be really careful. But look at him. He, he goes to their front base, starts crawling underneath. And he's just waiting for them to make some sort of play because uh, the bomb is free for us. You know, we can start planting the bomb here. Surprised we didn't. But Brandy gets a kill. He ends up getting traded top propane. But Ant gets another kill on this guy, so now it's a 2v1, or 1v1 now. And this is the 1v1 with, uh, with Ken and, and Flames. This is a really interesting 1v1 because, you know, Ken is, just, Ken is just trying to get shots down and, and Flames is having none of it. He doesn't want to challenge him at all because he keeps getting weak. So he's trying to finesse him and, and go to different windows and stuff, but Ken is, Ken is just all on top of it. I think Ken, uh, Ken after this round, he was like, I, you know, I'm challenged, so you need to challenge me to win. And he's just completely backing him down every single time here. And 
Flames ends up trying to climb this AC, it just, I mean, all for nothing. Did Bruce fall off the map? Yeah, he, he, he fell off the map after challenging this other guy. So the kill went to... Did it go to fame? What did it go to? Oh yeah, no. Oh shit. Okay, I thought he died after this child. I thought he died like right here, jumping off. But he he went back towards the propane and ended up jumping off there. He, he died at Diamond Con, yeah. Yeah, so it was just uh, him falling off. So that was a big round. Uh, two four rounds are basically, in my opinion, dagger rounds because you either closing the distance, going three four, or going down to two five, and that's that's a that's a really hard comeback to make. All right, B Street uh, counter from us. We have Ken watching the cross, and he can watch this uh, this barrel heady that some teams would would have some people go to. Um, and he could also kind of watch a little bit of the, the right window. We're pushing up towards the, the right street here. AG's going to try and make a play. He pushes up here. They back off because they realize that, you know, they're like, we're starting to make plays on the B street side. Now we're just taking progression towards the B street. We go up to top propane. We're just trying to make them make a play. Ken's going to watch our A push through. He goes back to our spawn and watches our A push through because we have B on lock. So it's either they go through mid or they hard push through B or they just go to A. And that's what, I mean, that's basically what we're, what we're covering. We're covering everything on the B street side. So just got to get info if they go A. It looks like they're going to go underneath underground though. So they're going to go underground to their side and, and jump up. Still nothing from our point of view. We don't see anything, so we're just waiting for them to make play. Brandon sees them going up on bomb. I'm surprised he didn't get that kill on fame, but he knows two have crossed onto bomb. So Ant gets the first kill. This other guy jumped, ended up jumping down, and while that was happening, AG on the other side, huge chow that killed Diamond Con. Obviously, Connor's not expecting him to be so pushed up here and, and to take that chow, but he does, and AG gets rewarded for it. Now they have one guy under, alive underground. Last guy alive was towards the A side. Fame has to wait for his teammate to kind of get towards near him to, to make some sort of play. Ank is on the bridge and can see a lot of the map. So he's just, he's like the overseer right now. And we're just, we're just making sure we get info on where they're at. Ant sees this guy deep towards the hut. We get some shots on. I don't think we've seen Fame yet. Now we've seen Fame. Ant doesn't go for him. AG and uh, Ken go for him. AG actually ends up getting a kill. Last guy alive towards the heli stairs here now. And uh, we can just we just play for him. This guy, he's just going to be top heli. He's, he can't win the round. So big round. Again, another dagger round where now we tie it up instead of being down, you know, 5-3. We throw the underground nade, don't hit anything because they're all pushing up towards the B street. So again, uh, B street counter was something a lot of teams that like did on defense. And smokes middle. Once again, he, he's working, making sure they're not pushing underground, but also making sure that he like can make some plays onto bomb. He does his jump once again. He doesn't see anything. He, he does see one guy now. They actually end up pushing Brandon. So Brandon tries to get a little bit too aggressive here, knowing that like there are people here. So maybe it's maybe a little bit too aggressive for Brandon. But uh, AG is still in our base and he can see if he can get a trade here. And that's what he does. So huge trade by, by AG. If he was on the other side of the map, like towards A side, it probably could have got really sketchy, but he's able to, you know, fall back and, and then end up getting the trade. Because he was the one, uh, off the break, who was towards this green tarp and was watching the pinch for us. So he was watching this A side pinch. But he's able to wrap around and, and get a yeah, Brandon's trade, which is really, really big. Because these guys are trapped underground. We, they can't really make a play underground. Now they're going to try and make a play together and just push uh, like open side of underground. 
LAG, super, super big for them right now is, is watching this underground push because they don't have underground. They, they're not having someone at the top stairs watching it. They have one guy in bomb and one guy in the elevator. They have like really no information about any part of this map right now except for number seven who was peaking this earlier. So they know that we can be going underground and that's what they're looking for. But again, he can't watch it the entire round. So that's what Ant is going to be making a play off of. You know, so you see Fame is constantly making this this read of, of watching the underground, but as soon as Kenny activates here, Ken makes a big play, jumping onto the bomb and getting this kill. You see him right here. He, he does the jump. This guy's playing this low corner, expecting this guy, or expecting someone to climb up the stairs to get a free kill. He comes from the other side window, gets a free kill onto this guy. Now that makes Fame react, and also the guy Elevator react. Since Fame reacts here, he's not holding the pinch anymore. Free Ant kill. Now it's a 3v1. We don't know where he is. Now Ant sees him at the top bridge. Ken can look up. And they're all looking, trapping him here before he gets to low blue. And now we are up 5-4. You posting the stream VOD? Yeah, I'm going to post this entire thing to, to YouTube. So if you guys miss anything, uh, for sure, just check out the YouTube. It'll be posted. Now we go at 5-4. So that's huge. What is it? Four rounds in a row for us? Or three rounds? I think it was three rounds. Because it was 4-2 at least, so. Four rounds. Or three rounds. What was it? Let me see. I want to make sure. Yeah, it was 2-4. So really, really good comeback right here. To not let them get one of, the, one of these rounds to make it, you know, match or map point. So in the final round, we send both AG and Ant to be pressuring towards this A side. Again, we smoke at middle. Uh, we were basically doing this like every defense. So it was comfortable for us to smoke middle and try and just get them questioning what they that what we were doing because we, they can't see, you know, AG and Ant cross like that towards the side. Once again, Ant makes a play towards the top heli. Flames is already here. He gets a free kill on Flames and he gets information that Fame is back left window. Now him and AG can start of sort of work this pr the, the pressure towards the pinch. On the other side of the map, Brandon is 1v2 and he still is able to get a kill uh, towards, you know, Diamond Con, who's just walking this up alone, unfortunately for him. And from that, Ann is able to still keep this pressure up towards the A side because they're now so focused on, on B side. And it's just, it's just a free round. Like we just, we have Ken Heli stairs or yeah, at the top heli, I think at this point, he could see everything that's going on over here. We know where both of them are at um, and it's kind of just a chalk round for, for them. So that was, uh, that was one of the things I wanted to say for EWC is like, you know, we played high rise, obviously we liked it more than Rio, but again, we did not have the ability to throw smoke and that was something that we relied on a lot, I think. So maybe it's on us just not being as comfortable without the smoke or not being able to make the same type of plays without the smoke. But that was just, you know, that was what we were playing all year. Um, so that was unfortunate that we just couldn't use it during EWC. Because Ant, you know, he was our big playmaker on high rise and he couldn't, uh, he couldn't use it. But really good, really good search and destroy out of the boys, uh, especially because we were on that huge losing streak. Uh, you know, it was this 12 game S&D losing streak. So to bounce back, uh, with that one at the first, you know, s &D of champs to win that, to gain momentum there was uh, was massive. You, you heard me talking about it in the process, but we were like, if we didn't win that search destroy, we wouldn't have seen this as a, as a win. Because obviously we were expecting to win the, the series regardless, but winning the search destroy would have been really important for us to just get momentum in that game mode for, for the tournament. Why couldn't you use smokes? Smokes were GA'd on every map but invasion at EWC because of the new smokes. The smokes were like much bigger, so they were just GA'd by, uh, by the league or by the teams. Do you think for next year that practicing the maps without smokes and keep it as wrong any as possible so that at least if smokes get GA'd, there's not much of an adapt adaptation to be made? No, I think it's just a waste of time because it's like we couldn't read that smokes were going to get GA'd. We, we played it the entire year with, with smokes, so it's there's no point getting fake practice like that you, you just don't know what's going to happen so we can move to the uh, karachi control now and this was a, a pretty clean win by us we win the break off we get someone on point brandon can stay top uh third 
and Ant can now get inside their base and kind of make some plays and, and just finesse over here. So big thing for Karachi was if you can get someone on point, you just have someone top third or, or even, you know, low over here, just watching this left side. If you can make sure that this whole left side is covered, now number one on point, all he needs to do is basically watch his short and top fire. That's all he needs to do. Um, and if you have two people, they can just watch either either of them themselves. But if you can just maintain your position on a heady, you can kind of finesse. And, you know, even if you do need help, you can call out to this guy to, to help you out. So that was the big thing for, you know, crotchy breakoffs and just capping it in general. Again, uh, Ann is pushed up. He can just make plays in their base. And this is just so annoying. At that point, you get two kills. Now Ann can start either making plays towards B and everyone else can just, you know, stack the point or if you want you can just push this guy bump him off to top fire number four now caps the point number three can you know play towards useless it all depends on what you really want to do as a team uh, but that's exactly what we do here i'm i'm we played this amount so many times that i knew what was people were going to do based on just watching but uh, actually what they're going to do here brandon ends up getting off point two because he's expecting ken uh to just go and and you know, get on this solo cap. Plus, we're up like pretty big lives, knowing where they're going to be spawning. I think Brandon just wants to make sure that he's helping out and keeping the pressure on. But actually, he ends up just going back to point just to be safe. Get the kill useless. Unfortunately, because he goes and turns his back, because he originally wanted to go top fire and help them out towards getting this progression towards B, but he turns around to go back to point and during that time where he's turning around he doesn't see this guy coming up short like this and he's really surprised so that's yeah that's just an unfortunate you know timing thing where he kind of made himself get to bad timing here still getting the kills useless side and is still staying alive and he is just being a nuisance in their base because he's now blocking their spawn they are spawning deep here. He is blocking the close spawn. They're spawning deep towards this like white SUV. And he can play for this kill, the spawn kill over here. He unfortunately doesn't get the kill, but he, he did his job to basically block the spawn to begin with. And he had a free play to, to make. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the kill though. But now they stabilize and we haven't captured the junk spawn yet. So we're still spawning P3 which isn't great, but now, since we're still spawning P3, we haven't capped A, our goal is to capture, or guarantee A in this point. So we get some left side pressure, get a kill top three, now we need to make our way to the point. This is what I was I was talking about before. It's it's just big to make sure that you have the left control. So Brandon's still top three. AG's top fountain holding the top part. This guy's a live bridge here, but you know, this should be a free kill for Brandon or or AG at least to get the trade. And these guys are just watching both their pinch and the top fire slash top short. So should just be an easy guarantee for the eight point. Age is going to make his way towards towards B because he knows we, we're going to cap this. Now he can get some initial pressure on anyone that might be flooding over the, the half wall to try and get initial positioning towards B. Free kill. Now we get the kill. I don't know why Fame is still here at the bridge. Me and, Ke or me and Damon were just screaming for Brandon to just leave this guy. If you leave this guy, he is useless. Because we're already making our way towards B side. If you leave him, now it's a 3 2 towards the side of the map, and he's completely useless. He can't do anything from this position. That's a big thing with, with capping A point and like making your way towards B. Like if you knew or if you know that they're gonna be capping this A point, you need to be making moves towards this, this other side of the map and taking what you can on the other side. At this point, it's just really hard because like he just needs to take a chow and or die or something. Like he just he can't stay alive here and just be here. This guy is he's just gonna be rendered useless at this point. Yeah, 
Yeah, Fred's gonna put himself in the right position to find that kill. The time is now gonna be extended. Fred already being a nuisance in towards the cafe. Cannot close out that kill. He's able to find it eventually with the gun switch, but... Now it's Shotzi trying to make a play for But since they're not able to get useless control while we're capping A, because they ended up deciding to pinch and it didn't end up working, we have free uh, control over this. We start spawning over here too because of our pressure and where our players are. And it's like once you start spawning useless, it's a pretty free round for the most part. You just have to win trade battles basically around this front ticket, front bus area. And if you can do that, you'll just, you'll just win the round every time pretty much. Huge kills, we start double stacking. One guy live, back L here. We get the kill. One guy is trying to flank top fire, we get that other kill. Now they're gonna start flooding over the half wall and it should, it's just a free round. Like, you just know where they're gonna be coming from. It's a hard wall for them to jump over and you just win the round instantly by stacking. So huge first round offense. Offense once again favored side, so we we had the choice to pick that side. We pick offense to start. We win the the first offense. LEG kind of standard uh, break off. One guy in point. One guy watching over him top plat. One guy is gonna go coop to make sure he has like low left side, and then one guy uh, is at the back third area or like top third. He's expecting someone to make a play and try and scam or jump over like this, but he's kind of, I don't know, Flames might be a little bit out of the play for my liking. Brandy gets a kill on the point. Eshel gets a kill on the left side. I mean, unfortunately, they are still spawning towards this P3 area. And because, you know, Ant, he gets this kill, but he gets traded right away. So hindsight 2020, you probably just want to make sure you're just staying alive there. Like you're, he, he's pretty aggressive, but he's able to get traded right away. Now they teamwork, or sorry, team shot. Brandon top fire, they're still solo capping. Again, like I said before, Estrell holding the left side, making sure that no one can come from the left side here. So we basically kind of have to just give it up and chalk it up. You see our players starting to flood towards the B side, uh, trying to st start getting initial pressure towards fire, maybe even useless, um, and covering this area of the map. There's no point of us fighting A again. We're just playing exit kills basically. So, huge two piece by Ant, top fire. We also get the kill towards Useless. Uh, Ken's last live, and he finds this guy towards our, you know, our back alley. He ends up dying for it, but we know where he is now, and we can just trade him out. While that's happening, Brandon has now pushed into Useless or Junk, whatever you want to call it. He's blocking the spawn, so they're spawning a little bit deeper now. The whole thing with this defense is you want to make sure that you're spawning them as far as possible uh, once they have A capped. Make them take routes either around here or make them try and wrap around here. Uh, but if, as long as they're spawning you know, deep, it's a better chance for you to win the defense. It's obviously common sense. They're not spawning close where they can just keep refilling and flooding towards the B side and, and capping the point. From this B point that you have Brandon dies here. That's a, that's a big death, unfortunately, for us. Again, you need to be staying alive here as much as possible, or at least staying alive with someone in a close position to help you out. But he dies there, and there's no one to help out and refill here. Ant gets a kill towards the right side, and AG gets a really big kill towards Fot Fire. So we're able to salvage it, but you know, in a situation where they had all just hit through useless and captured the spawn, um, it could have been really bad. But they end up do end up capturing the spawn. You see, they're they're spawning close now. Ken gets gunned, ticket. He just, you know, teamwork. Actually, is he teamwork? He just gets camered and then shot with the sub. He's, he's not winning with an air over there. Trades happen. Look at this. I love this play out of Ant because what he's doing is he's pre popping 
the pinch to start blocking the spawn so anyone who dies here for the LEG team spawns out. But look at what happens here. He pre pops the pinch. He's blocking the barrel spawn, but he's not playing this spawn. And this is, I mean, maybe it's on us for not ever getting in that situation or getting in that specific situation. Uh, but he's not expecting this guy to still spawn here. Um, that's just unfortunate. You know, hindsight, now he knows. But he's expecting once he's here, he's blocking the spawn and then he's just going to play for spawn kills. But number six sees him, Estril, gets a kill for free. You see him back up, right? And as soon as he starts backing up, he turns back around. Doesn't win the gunfight, unfortunately. So that's them spawning still at the barrels. So it's... I, I think it's a fucking awesome play by Ant. It's just unfortunate that... Just because he's blocking this barrel spawn doesn't mean that he's blocking this other close spawn. Which, in my opinion, is pretty fucking whack, but who knows, whatever. So again, now they're spawning super, super close. We're also spawning close as well, but again, it's, it's much different when you're on the offensive side where you're able to get much easier pressure going through ticket or going through lights and, or, or even going top single if you want and having someone watch over rather than just flooding the wall or having to take a longer route, either through, uh, you know, long or through fire like that. It's, it's just, it's harder on defense. But even though, even though they're spawning close, we do win those important gunfights. Like I said before, if you're winning these gunfights in this, like, box, that's, that's the most important thing. They're still spawning close too because we haven't, you know, re, retaken that that spawn and, and applied pressure there. See, now we get wiped. They get three down. Again, we we just have, or sorry, we we uh, AG gets one kill, but they able to shade him out right away. We're just expecting them to go ticket here. They end up going lights. I guess it's just a miscom because we don't have anyone looking towards this light side. And the last guy alive, Ken, he's, he's holding the pinch in case they were going to go do like a full pinch like that. But he gets a kill and gets another guy weak for these guys flooding. So, you know, unfortunately, it's a team kill by Ann. I guess he throws attack and hits Brandon while he's weak. We're still able to get more pressure jumping over this wall and getting back onto the point. And Ken's able to stay alive here, top fire, and hold spawners off. Oh, they, they actually end up killing him. But again, Brandon gets a trade. So that initial pressure or initial gunfight that Ken was able to take, he gets the information not only that one is crossing, but also that Ken was there. Brandon gets that, that trade. And now we can, once again, try and push onto this hill and, and break it. It's just, again, super hard when they're spawning so close, and I think they end up just winning this round. Yeah, I mean, you just cap it at that point. At a certain point, it just gets really hard to keep up with the flooding that the offense has. All right, so triple, triple mid break. We get two guys on the point. Or sorry, we get one guy on the point, and uh, we have one guy challenging mid cut, and also one guy jumping up to the top AC. This is kind of just a counter left break where we're just basically not sending anyone towards the right side of the map and not sending anyone to hold the top plat. It's just going to be the person on point to watch that, and if they end up coming that way, these guys on the left side of the map can adjust and work that either through fountain or just turning around and going back to the point and we still have one guy top fire or sorry top third AG gets to kill top AC really big read out of Brandon here to watch the pinch here too because he knows some guy could have gone low coop to pinch he ends up backing off from an estrial he was about to go pinch if you saw it he backed off from it. Oh, wow. We just... We got to go back to it. You see, he was about to go pinch. He backs off from it, though. I'm guessing because his teammate died. 
So now we're just on solo on the on the point. AG pushes out his short. He's now alone in, in Fountain, kind of finessing his life. They kind of have to worry about him. Also, Ant wins a, a kill uh, on the useless side. Huge, huge, huge kill because now they have to worry about their useless because they don't want a spawning B uh, and capping that right away after we cap A. So you know, number A has to go towards this way, go towards you know the fire side of the map or red side, whatever you want to call it. And they have to motion towards this side of the map, giving us a free A push, or free A cap at least. Number six, last live guy here, but he's going to get easily traded out. Brandon can now cap the point. Number three is already pushed up towards their back dome. So this should just be a freak A cap. As you see, LAG giving it up. There's nothing really they can do. It's just not worth for them to, to hit this point out. But they do get a kill on, on AG, which means that they can at least pressure it once again. And as you see, three of them pressure towards the useless side because they know they, that they need to take control of this if they're going to give up A. So they get the kill on Ken. And staying alive here, but he dies. But So that's that's their reset. So this, that's a big one-on-one -on -one for Brandon to win. And they actually just don't challenge him, so they just give him the point completely. So they don't, they don't contest this knowing that it's a possibility for them to... If, you know, if they were to die, for them to just push up and start basically making the guys useless, useless, <laughs> or, or uh, and not being able to make a play. Uh, but again, as long as you're blocking useless, there we're gonna spawn like Cooper P3 based on you know, positioning of where our guys are and where they are. But here, like we're gonna spawn Coop. So we spawn Coop. We know that they're useless here. We can either wrap and kill this useless guy to try and retake the spawn, or we can take routes this way on the map. We already have Ant who's already making a play to open things up on this side, so. I think this first part, we're just gonna try and not take the spawn and, and try and make our way through middle to break. We get a kill top fire, we get another kill, huge kill towards lights, now we can get onto the point. We know one guy is still useless and we're playing for him. That's what number three is doing. We get the kill useless, Brandon finds this guy uh, low fountain. They can teamwork him. Huge kills for the middle of the map. They're now still spawning in the back alley, and they're gonna have to flood over the whole, over the wall to go back out. We're still maintaining pressure. Again, we're maintaining pressure over here. We're actually still spawning coop. So the big thing, everyone was talking about spawns, about Karachi, and being like, "Oh, useless isn't being blocked. Why aren't you spawning there?" So the point of it was like. You basically would have to recapture the spawn and actually have a player basically squad spawn into that position to what we would we would call it like a, a magnet spawn. So you would you would capture the spawn and it, it would become a magnet where you start spawning here. But if you're not actually dragging someone to be attracted to that spawn yet, you're gonna keep spawning where you were spawning before, squad spawn wise, if that makes sense. So that's why we don't spawn here, because we had never had someone to spawn, squad spawn onto in this position, if that makes sense. Even though they're not blocking it. That's how it would work for basically most, most of the time. So we're still spawning here. We, we, never, we never magnetize the spawn. We never had someone take the route, wrap, have someone squad spawn on them, and then get the, the spawn, right? So that's what I, I believe Kenny's going to do here. He's going to wrap, and him and AG are going to wrap this way to make sure that we consistently get the spawn rather than just continuing to spawn Coop the entire round. So that's just, it's just not, uh, uh, it's not feasible. See, now you, I'm not, so that's the one thing I'm not sure. I don't know why our guy here, Brandon, spawns P3 and not uh, Coop, or sorry, uh, useless with our guys squad spawn wise it's a squad spawn but it's a squad spawn on number two now I don't know why it's a squad spawn number two and not number one and number three that's just that's just the game for you but we've now exited the coup spawn I just don't know personally I still don't know why we just don't spawn useless because there was two to squad spawn on rather than just one guy uh, but who knows at that point I don't know but now at least we have a closer spawn rather than just the coop spawn. 
Fame, Diamond Cut also following up, and all of a sudden LAG start to make their play forward, but immediately gets counteracted. And again, because we never got the the junk spawn or the useless spawn, we're still spawning P3. He's still on the hunt for trades, able to get the pistol out to take care of Dashy, and now all of a sudden Optic have to regain. Yeah, now if you are Kenny, you just want to slow down this game, allow your teammates to get those close ones. Now all the reinforcements are going to be here from Optic. They bombard their way through bottom ticket. They're able to trade effectively. Now you just got to work it towards B. Now we get the spawn. No LAG people to pressure it. Our last guy, our last guys alive are towards the P3. Or sorry, not P3. I keep saying P3. Are towards junk, useless. So now we got to start getting the spawns. It took a little bit. Took a little, you know, a few pushes, but we ended up eliminating the pressure, low ticket and, and fire. So now we can get the spawn and, and start making our way to actually pressuring it. Now they're a little long. One guy spawns back alley. Big kills by Ken, top uh, top single. Trades still happen. We get a kill ticket. We're still spawning close. Now we can stack the point. We know last guy alive, or first guy up, I should say, is Flames. He got the kill on Kenny over here towards the spawn. We have to lick, look for him on the pinch. Huge kills. We get the nade death by Ant on point. But these guys, who is it? Brandon and AG both chow off the point and get kills on their own. Huge, huge kills. No, this guy's on point because the, the point's contested. We can finesse this. We know he's in the side room. Brandon, huge kill. Since we're still spawning close, we can get over to the point really quickly. We're watching the jump up. Just team shotting. Ant is watching their pinch because there was this last guy over here. He knew there was one guy towards the fireside pinching. We can just stack the point and, uh, and we're good. So really good adaptation through the round to to make sure we get the spawns and end up winning that. Hey, what's good, JP? I think I, f I fixed I fixed my sleep schedule instantly. I stayed up to like 10:30, slept from 10:30 to like 8:30, and now I'm I'm feeling fine. And even though he's not having the best performance in these respawns, he's always having clutch moments. So Optic Texas now at game point. We are the shots each other. 11 now overall. Dashy also positive, but it really has been the Fred and Shotzi show. LAG now on their next offensive attempt. Another type of break by LAG here. They have one guy go to watch mid cut. One guy stay on point. One guy watch top plat over him. Uh, this guy's watching uh, top fire. And one guy watching... Um, he's actually top third here. Watching the top scaf uh, slash, you know, top third push too. For anyone that might be getting aggressive this side of the map. One thing they're not watching though, top AC. AG just jumps over this guy, gets a free kill on the point. Ant pitches off the break. Maybe a little too aggressive once again by Ant. Like I would have liked him to just stay alive there and maybe just play a heady or something. Keep that progression on the useless side because he doesn't get a kill for it. But uh, we kind of won the break because we, we were able to get that kill towards the, uh, the AC side. At that objective over towards B. So early on there, trying to contest this all the way to the very end. The first segment comes in, but you have... What did I say for a capping A? You want to make sure you're covering the left street. Because now we spawn this way and have made progressions towards this, this right side of the map, we are now a top AC, we are now top scaf or top third. We are denying them for possibly getting the same point because if you have this high ground, you can kill them off the point and you can make sure that you like dictate where they go off spawn because they're gonna have to, you know, kill you in order to get towards A, if that makes sense. So, Ant jumps off top third, gets a two-piece for it on point. AG is now pressuring towards this uh, garage slash top three stairs side. He doesn't even need the help because Ken gets the kill already. Now we need to make sure that uh, we're picking up the left because before here, Ken sees fame. He has this gunfight with Fame, knows that he's there, he gets the kill on Fame. So he knows it's a possibility that Fame has gone towards, you know, this useless side once again. He actually spawns there, too. So he has to make sure that he's picking up the left. This is a big play by, by Ken. We get all these kills here, pick up the left. Especially once, you know, AG's making this play towards top three stairs, it's a possibility that they can get this close spawn. So 
We just gotta make sure that we're covering all of our bases. They actually end up all spawning over here too. So we're cover we're blocking all these spawns. We should know that they're spawning right here. But I think it's, it takes a little bit of time for us to, to realize it. But we re-block re uh, here. That's what Ken does. He goes this way, he re-blocks, now they're spawning out. Spawning P3 now. So this is big kills here. If we can maintain um, pressure and get these kills out the point, they'll continue to spawn P3 outside of this junk spawn and uh, they'll have to recapture it. So they get these trades, they know we're obviously going to try and break from this fire and short side. So they get those three kills, they can stack the point. Nothing really we can do, we, we just... We should have probably just realized that they were spawning there in the first place to begin with. Uh, off the rip and be a little bit quicker to react to it. But, you know, that's... That's just what happens sometimes. Now they're starting to work their way towards A and they're going to start capping both points, which is really, really scary for us. But... We actually spawned pretty close here. So they haven't capped B point yet. They're about to cap it. But look at number where two spawns. I guess this is a, a little squad spawn thing with number one. Um, and we're just spawning towards the street side. And we can get these guys off point. Still 20 to 20 lives though. And they've already gotten five ticks. So that's, it's really, really, really unfortunate for us. Because that's not what you want as a defensive side. But you still have a life. So that's the only good part. Now you need to make sure you got kill these guys off of... Uh, old B because they just capped it you know that they're going to try and be making plays around either through back alley through long through short so just get accounting for these last two or three guys and that's what we do we account for all of them get all those three kills four down we know they're still spawning probably junk I'm guessing because of where number two is, they start spawning deeper here. Um, and they're not spot spawning on number eight. And Ann is able, able to just get inside P3 and just make some plays here. He's just being a nuisance in P3. They have to clear him before they even get towards Coop. So we know where they're... they're I mean, they're just spawning on P3 right now. But we know that they're going to be trying to obviously get towards top three and get kills towards this A side. If we can maintain control of top three the whole round for the rest of the round, we can win this. It's 17 to 10. We, these are really big spawn kills. If we can uh, win a defense, first off, we'll win the game. But second off, like, it won't go to round five and, and a defensive win on Karachi is, is much harder. Yes, this will be on YouTube. This is just really big by plays by, by Ant. Ken's just making sure that, you know, if they spawned towards this, this junk side, that they're not making plays this way to try and get through a, um, you know, from the backside through short or through fountain, making these type of routes. We're just holding this top third side. As long as we hold this shit, we're fine. We're chilling. Plus with the life lead. Yeah. So they squad spawn useless. That's Kenny on the yellow car here. He is just trying to stay alive and get information on anyone that could possibly be coming that left side now we're kind of going to readjust a little bit ag is now playing inside fire so ken is going to go a little bit more towards the point and um and and play inside fountain and he can watch this cross as well but these guys back short that's what he does he gets a kill he might get another one he does get another one really big really good good plays one guy's full pinching other guy's top three we still maintain the control of the top three. We just need to worry about this last guy pinching. AG, really big heads up play to just look for it because we know he's missing. And now he can just ape this guy. He gets the kill. And they're, they're still spawning junk. They have to take routes. Either they take routes contesting us top three, which is basically impossible because we're just holding this. It's just such an easy way to hold it. Or you have to push through, um, you know, old P5 and push through short or go into fountain and kill this guy. But Ken's there. So really, really big defense out of us. They end up going through Fountain to try and back down AG over here. And that's what like that's a really good play out of them because they, that's the only play that they really have at this point. We get some of these kills. They end up starting to at least have one guy who's fame play for these top third uh, gunfights. 
He's backing these guys down. One of their last guys, Estro, is going to be able to get on point here. He actually gets his kill on AC, and they get a kill on uh, AG, who is just hiding this window. So probably not the best play to be hiding the window, because in, in case they do spawn junk like this, you know, they can just hit up top fire and get a kill for free. So that's, you know, not the best, but they get two kills here. And this is a really, really big play here by Ken. So we're going to have Ant here, who's going to try and pinch. But they're going to watch this. They see this from short, and they see this from on point. They can kill him. This is a really sketchy situation because if they just get a kill on Ken, like after killing Ant, they win the, they win the round. Even though it's 13 to three, they get on point, they cap it. We're going to be spawning like over here. There's no way we get to the point. And they only need one tick, remember? Because we got the five ticks. So Ken makes a fucking massive play here. They get the kill on Ant because, you know, they were short and on point and because he was hiding on point from the, the pinch itself. They teamwork Ant. Ken is last alive. He needs to go massive. I think he actually needs to get this three piece for us to win. I think if just one guy stays alive, I think they still win. So Ken's here. He hits the mid cut, gets the first kill, gets the second kill on the two guys short. Last guy alive, Estrell. He's already weak from Ant and he gets the three piece. People don't really talk about this play enough because this would have been um, a round five where we would have gotten... Well, we yeah we actually we would have gotten offense, but it would have just gone to round five in general. But he makes a one v three play and wins us the entire series with this. So big play by Ken. AJ and Ant standing up. But uh, obviously, great first series. We started off with the three zero going into you know the first game of champs. And like I said before, the S and D was big just because we wanted to get momentum in that game mode in general. So, pretty clean first series against LAG with the 3-0 victory. So, appreciate you guys for watching that.